hey guys this is franklin so in this video i'm gonna talk about deformation tools which you can find it from here let's drag this and move it to the viewport and also you can find this from under the transform toolbar but i'm using from this so here, here let's see about the most useful commands from this toolbar okay let's get started let's create a polygon and make a planar surface just extrude this so now here we have a poly surface so from this deformation tools we have some we have a stretch command we can use this to stretch an object let me show you let's click on this and select the object enter and just give a axis you can see here we can stretch it like however we want this is almost like scale 1d but we will not use this command that much so let's move on to the next one which is twist this is a cool stuff just let me create a center point for this polygon for creating a center point just type area centroid then you will get a center point and i'm gonna copy this to the top okay now just click this twist first select the object enter for the start of the twist axis i'm gonna select the base point and the end of the twist axis i'm gonna choose the top point and now it's asking a an angle i'm gonna choose somewhere here and you can just like this by rotating you can twist the object i'm gonna show it again just click on this twist command select the object and you need to give the start and end axis and select somewhere just rotate like this i don't need this much of twist so i'm gonna do it again to reduce a little bit okay now this is good okay that's it that's it about twist and next we have bend before that i'm gonna explain about taper taper is we will taper one side of an object let me show you just select this select the object same as before we need to select a base point and the end axis then just like this if you move your cursor outside this will taper outside but if you move the cursor inside this will taper like this this is how taper will work now and here we have bend bend will basically bend an object just select this select the object enter same as before you need to give a start axis and end axis and you can see we can bend however we want 
okay now let's move to the real thing which is this flow along surface let me go back to this this one because I'm gonna use this surface to flow along surface here you can find the flow along surface this is a quite interesting one let's see about that basically the flow along surface will help to map an object or geometry into a surface like if I have a box here no, uh, let me explain by creating it first we need to create a rectangle and let's create a box here now let's array this type array select the object enter so in the x direction i want 10 the y direction maybe 50 z direction just one and here we can give the spacing okay so i'm gonna change the number here x number will be six is enough and y number will be 35 no 29 will work ah, okay so and i'm gonna select all the boxes and make a group so what flow along surface will do is we can map these geometry into a surface let's extract this surface before doing that okay click on the flow along surface first we need to select an object enter oh okay we need to have a base surface for that we need to make this rectangle to a planar surface now we have a base surface this is the target surface this is the geometry now again click this flow along surface select the objects enter and base surface and the target surface and when you click the base surface always try to click in a corner same for the target surface now you can see here we have created these boxes into the surface but you can see here here we have some kind of problems that because the targeted surface area is not equal to the base surface area why is that is we created the rectangle randomly let me let it delete this and this time i'm gonna make it a proper way and delete this again so the proper way to do is we need to create a rectangle from this surface for that we can use this command called create uv curve and enter now we have the same area rectangle of the surface instead of doing a random rectangle we can do it in this way so this time i'm gonna create a different shape for example let's create a star kind of shape go to the polygon and star and i'm just fill it all the corners by using fillet corners enter
okay just like this and i'm gonna select everything planar just give a little bit extrusion that's it so i'm gonna cop array this again so for the x i'm gonna change the number and for the y also okay i think this is good now select everything without the rectangle and make a group and make this rectangle as a planar surface Okay, now again click this flow along surface, select the object, enter and select the base surface and the target surface. Now you can see we have this geometry in the surface in a proper way. So that's how flow along surface will work. So let's now move to the next command which is cage edit. Cage edit is also an useful command in many ways. Let me tell you why it's why it's a useful command. By using this command, we can deform any object by its control points. Let me show you. Let's just click on this cage edit and first we need to select the object. I'm gonna select this as an object. Enter and here we, you have to click this bounding box and enter and here you can give the point count. Now 4, 4, 4 is fine and enter and again enter. So you can see we have created a cage around this object now by using this control point we can manipulate or deform like if you want to move this part only just by choosing this control point we can deform this space so we can get more control over an object to deform if you want to increase the control points let me create a box again just to show you I know uh, instead of box just create a star so that will look interesting okay now we just select the object or just select the cage edit select the object enter you need to give the bounding box enter and in the point count yeah here we already gave four 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 which is we will get four control point on the x-axis and four control point on the y-axis and four control point on the z-axis so if we want to change we can change it here for the x i'm gonna give five and we also five but z i'm gonna give ten enter and again enter again enter so you can see now in the x-axis we have five control point and the y-axis we have five control points but in the z-axis we have ten control points now we have so much of control over this object by using this control point we can do whatever we want So this looks so bad. I'm gonna just delete this. 
so anyways that's how cage edit will work cage edit is one of the amazing commands in rhino just play around it so that you can explore more of this command so that's it for today guys i will see you on the another video